How's it going? Um, some of you may be familiar with me, or some of you may be new to stretching, and this is the do's and don'ts of stretching. Um, this is part one. It's just the basics. In this one, we're going to be covering types of stretching, types of plugs, and jewelry information, like types of jewelry, and we're going to talk about the good and the bad of each. So, let's get started. Alright, now we're going to talk about the types of stretching. When you're at smaller sizes, pretty much anything below a zero gauge, you're going to end up using tapers to stretch your ears. This here is a two gauge stainless steel taper. This is a half inch acrylic taper. You should never use acrylic, and we'll talk about that in a minute. Um, here's a picture of some more tapers so you can get a better idea in case that really didn't do it for you. Tapers are good for a little while when you're at smaller sizes because you have a smaller chance of getting a blowout or a tear or anything horrific or terrifying. Um, you want to get out of tapers as soon as you can. Get away from them. They'll mess you up. You'll get tears and blowouts. And then you'll have little cat nasty butthole earlobe looking things that are scabbed up and gross. Get away from tapers as soon as possible. Um, they're good when they're small, but as soon as you can start tape stretching, that's when you need to get into tape stretching because it's a lot more gradual. Alright, so now we're going to talk about tape stretching. Tape stretching is wrapping tape around a plug to increase the diameter and basically make it bigger until you get to the size you're looking to get to. Um, here's a plug I taped from 5 eighths to 3 fourths. This is what they look like. They're acrylic and they had tape on them and they got the job done. Basically, um, it's a lot more gradual than using tapers because it's not as like just harsh on your ears because you're not getting all of it at once. Because once you get into bigger sizes, the stretches get a lot bigger. Um, so it's a lot more gradual. There's a few different kinds of tape that you want to use. There's only one tape you really, no, there's two tapes you really want to use, and then some others you can use, and it's totally up to you, but. Um, the main tape, if you can get a hold of it, is bondage tape. You want to use bondage tape. Or, um, plumber's tape, which is Teflon PTFE tape. Here's a picture of it. Um, the only thing is, is Teflon's a little bit thinner, so it's up to you. Um, I like bondage better, but it's up to you. Um, basically, it's a really gradual way of stretching, and it's a lot better on your ears. You're not, you have a smaller chance of getting a blowout or anything terrible, so... You really want to stick with that. Now I guess we're going to talk about the two bad ways to stretch. Um, I'm sure people have come up with a lot worse ways to stretch, but these are just the two most common ones. Um, you should kind of avoid or not do at all. So basically there's two kinds. First kind is silicone stretching. This here is silicone, and we'll talk about it in a minute, but this is what it looks like. It's squishy. It's not hard. And what you do is you fold it up, jam in your ear hole and pow it's at the next size but the thing is obviously that could be very traumatic rip your ear blow it out make the thing fall off your head you really want to avoid it because it can do a lot more damage than good and the second kind of bad stretching is dead stretching I'm just gonna use this as an example um dead stretching is where it's basically the, what it sounds like you just take your ear shove the next thing in and you move on but uh, that can actually do a lot of damage too because if your ear's not cool with it and you just rip it in there and your ear gets pissed off and bleeds and falls off and then you got, you know, one ear gone and half your face missing. And that's not really that good. So basically, the first two are the good. Um, you want to tape stretch as soon as you get out of tapers. And these two, dead stretching and silicone stretching, were the bad ones. Alright, so now we're going to talk about the types of plugs slash jewelry that isn't jewelry material related. Just basically how it looks and that kind of stuff. Jewelry materials after this. So if you're new to stretching, this is probably new to you. And if you've stretched for years and years, it's a review. So anyway, um, there's pretty much three basic kinds with some little subcategories under them. You have single flared, double flared, no flared. Um, your no-flared can have O-rings, basically. And then you've got plugs, which are solid, and eyelets or tunnels or flesh tunnels or whatever else you want to call them. Basically doesn't have anything in it. And let's get to the examples. Um, this, 
these, actually, not this. These are no flared plugs because they're solid and they don't have a flare. Um, I mean, you can really argue it to whatever you want. Let's just move on. These are double flared. See the high part? It's a double flared. It has two flares, as in double. And it's a tunnel. It's pretty simple. Um, obviously, it's not rocket science. And this is a single flared because this black ring comes off. You can see there's only one flare on it. It's a single flared tunnel. There's seven eighths. And basically, it's not very hard. Um, obviously, there's other stuff out there. Some people will take the whole, their no flared plugs and cut the ridges into them so that these O rings, the black thing, fit onto it and keep it in there better, but it's up to you. So I guess now we're going to talk about the types of jewelry. So now we're going to talk about pretty much the types of jewelry material. There's a few of them out there. There's actually a whole lot of them. Um, this here is a link to uh, um, Joe Walton's video about... It's actually like a series because there's two or three or four parts of all the different kinds of jewelry materials. There's a bunch of them out there. I'm just going to hit the basic ones because it's the ones that I have. So, let's talk about it. Um, stainless steel, which is, you know, very good for new piercings. It's what you'll get in there if you go somewhere legit. They'll put stainless steel. Um, Joe goes into it a lot more depth than I'm about to. But basically, it's not porous. Your skin won't grow to it. That's all I've got. Uh, another kind. This blue there, that, not the yellow, but the blue. That's acrylic. Um, it's basically a kind of plastic. You don't really want to use acrylic in fresh piercings. You don't really want to use it at all, but, you know, you do what you do. Um, pretty much, it is porous. Your skin can grow to it, and it can harbor bacteria and infection stuff because it is porous and has little bitty holes in it. The next thing we're going to talk about is wood. These are wood, and these are wood. Um, basically, wood isn't good for fresh stretches because it can dry out your ears and make your ears crack. Wood is nice because it's from the earth. Um, it looks cool. You can do whatever you want with it. Um, basically, you got to keep them oiled and stuff. Joe goes into it a lot more detail. They can dry your ears out. They'll put them in fresh piercings. And some people have sensitivities to wood as well as silicone and acrylic and it really depends on if you can wear it and if you like it. Uh, the next thing we talk about is Pyrex glass. Pyrex glass is awesome. These are three quarter inch double flare Pyrex glass. Joe goes into it a lot more detail. Um, they're, it's just glass. It's not porous. Um, you can stretch with it and it is nice and it's easy to clean. Uh, pretty much the last kind, silicone. These are silicone plugs. It's a pretty bad glare. Sorry. This is what they look like. Squishy and white. Uh, don't stretch with it. It is porous. Your skin will adhere to it if it wants to. It might not want to. You never know. Could be a bad relationship. Um, your skin can stick to it. Um, it can get bacteria and grow stuff in it. And, once again, here's the link to that video series pretty much thing with Joe talking about all the different kinds of materials. So, let's go ahead and wrap this puppy up. Alright, so that was pretty much the basics. Um, there should be a couple more parts to this whole deal. Um, I'm not sure what they're going to be, but they're going to be a little more towards the bigger sizes, as well as just information that people can use as well. It's going to have the oil kind of stuff in it. Um, so, we'll see how it goes. But basically in this one, it was about the types of plugs, you know, what they look like, how many flares they have, how many they don't, jewelry material, silicone, wood, glass, stainless steel, stuff like that, and the basic kinds of stretching, you know, the tape, the tapers, and the dead stretching, and you don't do it, and the silicone stretching, you don't do it. So this has been the first part of the do's and don'ts of stretching, as far as I'm concerned. Um, just remember... It's the way I've done stuff. Um, it's all the information that I've gathered from the internet. And you just take it for what it is. If you like it, do it. If you don't, don't. Um, basically, ear stretching is what you think. I mean, I can't tell you how to do one thing from another. 
it's up to you, you know. If you like something, go for it. If you don't, don't even worry about it. Um, it's your own personal thing. You do it however you want to, really. Um, it's your body. You do what you want to do to it. If it's wrong, it's wrong. If it's right, it's right. So just take that into account, and as well as the information that I'm putting out there and all these other people. So stretch safe, and I'll see you guys in part two.